This is a video in Clinical Medicine from the New England Journal of Medicine. Obtaining rapid vascular access is an essential step in the resuscitation of critically ill patients. The intraosseous route provides vascular access quickly and reliably when peripheral and central venous routes are unavailable or have failed. Although the insertion of an intraosseous needle was originally performed in pediatric resuscitations, this method has gained acceptance for use in adults, especially since the advent of mechanical insertion devices. The most recent guidelines from the Advanced Cardiac Life Support Certification Institute, published in 2010, recommend the intraosseous route over the endotracheal route for the administration of fluids and medications in adult patients in whom intravascular access is not available. This video describes the placement of an intraosseous needle in adult patients. The use of both a mechanical drill-based device and manual insertion will be demonstrated. Crystalloids, colloids, blood products, and many medications, including drugs used for resuscitation and vasopressor infusions, can be administered through the intraosseous route. In addition, a sample can be drawn from the intraosseous space in the critically ill patient for laboratory testing, such as blood typing, measurement of hemoglobin level, serum chemical analysis, and blood gas analysis. Contraindications include ipsilateral fractures, previous attempts at ipsilateral intraosseous access, local vascular injuries, cellulitis, and burns. The medullary cavity is a highly vascular structure that functions as a non-collapsible vein capable of accepting a large volume of fluids and medications and rapidly delivering them to the central circulation. The medullary venous sinusoids drain into a central venous channel, which exits the bone in the form of emissary and nutrient veins. The rate of infusion is limited by the size of the medullary cavity and the diameter of the intraosseous needle. A number of sites can be used for intraosseous needle insertion in an adult, such as the proximal tibia, the distal tibia, the distal femur, the calcaneus, the sternum, the humerus, and the styloid of the radius. When a mechanical insertion device is used, the anterior medial surface of the proximal tibia is the preferred site of insertion because it is easy to locate, it presents a flat, wide surface for insertion, and the subcutaneous layers overlying the bone are thin. If the intraosseous needle is inserted manually, the medial aspect of the distal tibia is the preferred site because of its thin bony cortex and the small amount of overlying tissue. A substantial amount of force and a large bore needle are required to manually penetrate the bone. The following items should be assembled in preparation for the drill-based insertion. Chlorhexidine or iodine solution for site preparation, sterile gloves, sterile towels for draping the site, a device insertion kit for mechanical insertion, a 10cc syringe for aspiration and infiltration, a solution of 1% lidocaine for analgesia if the patient is conscious, standard lure lock tubing for the delivery of fluids or medication, a pressure bag if large volumes of fluids need to be administered through the intraosseous system, and gauze and tape for securing the device. Obtaining intraosseous access is an emergency procedure. Consequently, it is rarely possible to obtain informed consent before performing the procedure. If possible, explain the risks and benefits of the procedure to the patient or the next of kin. Otherwise, proceed with insertion. When a mechanical device is used, the proximal tibia is the preferred site in adults. Secondary sites are the distal tibia and the humeral head. Position the patient's leg in slight flexion by placing a rolled towel under the knee. Don sterile gloves and expose and clean the site with chlorhexidine or iodine solution. Then drape the site in a sterile fashion. If the patient is conscious, infiltrate the skin and subcutaneous tissues and the periosteum with 20 to 30 milligrams of 1% lidocaine. Identify the tibial tuberosity. The desired insertion site is the flat medial surface of the tibia 
medially one finger's width away from the tibial tuberosity. Stabilize the leg with the non-dominant hand. Holding the drill in the dominant hand, position the needle tip at a 90 degree angle to the surface of the bone. Press and hold the trigger and gently guide the needle through the tissues, avoiding excess pressure. A sudden loss of resistance indicates that the needle has penetrated the cortex and has reached the medullary cavity. Remove the stylet and connect the needle to a 10 cc syringe with a standard lure lock connection. If the needle is correctly placed within the marrow cavity, the syringe should be able to stand upright without support. Aspiration of blood and marrow confirms adequate placement of the needle, but it is not always possible to aspirate marrow, even with adequate placement. Obtain confirmation of placement by infusing a 10 cc bolus of saline solution through the syringe. The fluid should flow easily with no resistance. If the fluid does not flow, select another insertion site. After correct placement has been confirmed, the test syringe can be disconnected and the intraosseous needle can be connected to regular infusion tubing. Fluids can be infused by gravity, but infusing fluids through a pressure bag produces better flow rates. A pressure bag should be used in patients requiring resuscitation once you are certain that the needle has been correctly placed and is functioning. If the patient is conscious, anesthetize the marrow cavity by infusing 20 to 40 milligrams of 1% lidocaine before initiating fluid infusion. While infusing fluids, watch carefully for extravasation and increased calf circumference. The needle and tubing should be secured to the leg with tape, and the leg should be immobilized to prevent dislodgement of the needle. To remove the catheter, disconnect the intravenous tubing and attach a sterile syringe to the hub. Stabilize the leg and gently pull back while rotating the needle clockwise. The following items should be assembled in preparation for the manual insertion of an intraosseous needle. Chlorhexidine or iodine solution for site preparation, sterile gloves, sterile towels for draping the site, an intraosseous needle, a 10 cc syringe for aspiration and infiltration, a solution of 1% lidocaine for analgesia if the patient is conscious, standard lure lock tubing for the delivery of fluids or medication, a pressure bag if large volumes of fluids need to be administered through the intraosseous system, and gauze and tape for securing the device. Several different types of needles can be used for manual intraosseous insertion. They all have in common the presence of a stylet, which improves the likelihood of cortical penetration and prevents plugging of the needle cavity with bone spicules during insertion. They range in size from 13 gauge to 20 gauge and have variable lengths and handle types. A depth marker or an adjustable sleeve allows for better control of penetration depth. A shorter shaft and a smaller handle are desirable features since they allow for better control. The preferred site for manual insertion in adults is the medial aspect of the distal tibia, just proximal to the medial malleolus. Position the leg so that it is in slight flexion and externally rotated at the hip. As described earlier for mechanical insertion, use sterile technique and appropriate analgesia. Stabilize the leg with the non-dominant hand. Hold the needle in the palm of the dominant hand and position it at a 90 degree angle to the long axis of the bone. Advance the needle through the bony cortex with a twisting or rotating motion and steady pressure. You will encounter a great deal of resistance. A sudden loss of resistance indicates that the needle has penetrated the cortex and reached the medullary cavity. Remove the stylet and connect a 5cc or 10cc syringe to the needle. Obtain confirmation of placement by infusing a 10cc bolus of saline solution through the syringe. The fluid should flow easily with no resistance. If the fluid does not flow easily, the needle can be repositioned by pulling back slightly but if further resistance is encountered, the needle should be removed and a new site selected. Through and through penetration of the bone can be avoided by using the depth markings on the needle and by placing the index finger about one centimeter from the bevel of the needle. Secure the needle with bulky gauze dressing and tape. The most common complication of intraosseous needle insertion is fluid extravasation resulting from through and through penetration of the bone or from incomplete insertion of the needle. 
If extravasation occurs, the needle should be removed and pressure should be applied to the site. Compartment syndrome is a rare but possible complication of fluid extravasation that may occur when a needle has been placed incorrectly. Bone spicules may cause blockage of the needle. To prevent blockage, the line should be flushed with 3 to 5 cc's of saline every 15 minutes. Other complications include fracture, infection, fat embolism, local hematoma, pain, local inflammation of the bone at the insertion site, and necrosis of the skin at the insertion site. Intraosseous needle insertion is used as a temporary measure when intravascular access cannot be achieved through peripheral or central venous routes. The intraosseous needle may remain in situ for 72 to 96 hours, but ideally it should be removed within 6 to 12 hours as soon as an alternative intravascular access has been established. The intraosseous route provides fast and reliable vascular access in emergency medical situations. The use of the appropriate technique will ensure that the procedure is performed as safely and effectively as possible.